Welcome back students, Mr. McCoy here. Today we're learning about for loops. Oh man, do I love for loops. For loops, uh, they really can't do anything that you couldn't do with a while loop, but uh, they are so much prettier. Uh, I probably write 10 for loops for every one while loop that I write. So I'm, I use for loops all the time. I love them. So what is a for loop? Well, it's pretty similar to a while loop. It continuously runs a block of code as long as the test condition is true. The major difference, though, is that a for loop generally iterates a fixed number of times. So a for loop is very handy if you already know how many times you want your loop to run. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a for loop and a while loop. So here's a while loop and here's a for loop, and they do exactly the same thing you'll see that uh, the parts are all still there but they're in different places we've got our loop variable initialization we have our test condition while i is less than five you can see that that occurs in both and you can see that we have an update to i that occurs in both loops I++ plus plus appears on both of these. But the location is slightly different and in a while loop you saw that it took one, two, three lines of code to get all three of those parts whereas with a for loop we did everything inside just this one line. Just a quick reminder of some vocabulary. Iteration um, is the term in programming that talks about uh, repeating a process. To iterate is to repeat. So a loop iterates a certain number of times. So if we want a loop to run five times, then we want to run five iterations. And uh, a theory is that the word iteration, since it starts with an I, might be why we use I commonly as a loop variable. I don't know if that's right or not, but it sounds good. So here's our syntax of a for loop. We start off with the word for, and then we have parentheses, and inside the parentheses we have this big mess. There's actually three lines of code that's happening in this one set of parentheses, uh, but we stick it all together and Java is happy with that, and all the programmers around the world seem happy with this, but in no other place in Java can I think of where you put a semicolon and then follow it up with additional code. but since uh, it's all part of the parentheses of a for loop, everyone seems okay with it. In the parentheses, we have three parts. One is our initialization phase, two is our Boolean expression, and three is our update. Between the parts, we put semicolons, but we don't need to put a semicolon after the third part because our closed parentheses is adequate for ending our for loop. Let's take a look at a real for loop and see how it would work. In this one we say for int i equals zero, while i is less than five, i will increment and we'll do this stuff. So that's pretty much how you read it, the way that I said it just then. And let's break down its parts. The first part, we have the initialization portion. So as soon as this for loop starts, we're going to declare an integer variable i and set it equal to zero. This first part, the initialization portion, only runs right at the beginning of a for loop. The next part is our test condition, a Boolean expression, just like you would put uh, in a while loop. We want this for loop to run as long as i is less than 5. And the last part is our update. We need i to change in some way, otherwise we would risk getting stuck inside of our for loop. Remember that i++ is just a shorthand way of writing i equals i plus 1. Or in other words, i goes up by 1 each time. So if i starts at 0, it goes up by 1 each time, and we keep running as long as i is less than 5, then you can see that this loop is going to run 5 times. But let's go ahead and trace through it. The first thing Java will do whenever it encounters this for loop, it does the initialization portion. 
int i equals zero. So it declares a new variable i and sets it equal to zero. Now that this initialization phase is done, we will not look at it again. Then we have our test condition. i is less than five. Is that true? Yes, it is. i is less than five. So we're going to go inside of our for loop. Notice we skip this part for now. So this is true. Put a check mark. So we go inside. System dot out dot print i and a space. So it's going to print zero and a space. We've reached the end of our for loop. So where does it go now? Well, now it's going to go to this update part. i increments by one and then we test the test condition again. Is i still less than five? Yes it is. So we do this stuff. It prints one and a space. Follows this arrow back up. i is going to increment. i becomes two. Is this still true? Yes it is. So we print i in a space. Go back up to our increment, our update phase. Our i becomes three. Is i still less than five? Yes it is. Let's run this print statement again. Three and a space. Follow this up. Increment i again. Is i less than five? Yes it is. Print i in a space for space. Follow it back up. i increments. i becomes 5. And then we do our test condition. Is i less than 5? No, it's not. So it doesn't run this again. And now we continue execution below. And you'll see that we ran 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So that's the, uh, the order of events in a for loop very similar to what you saw with while loops except uh, you can write it much more succinctly. So what's the advantage to using a for loop? You might think uh, I already learned while loop and for doesn't seem like it can do anything different than a while so why should I even bother with this? Well programmers like to be succinct and they like to be nice and tidy and they like to try to uh, minimize the amount of code that's being written and if you compare a while loop to a for loop here in this while loop we had three lines of code just handling the loop itself. In this for loop we had one line of code that handles the loop. So if you're having a programs with lots of loops you can see how this would be a much cleaner way to code. Once you get the hang of it you'll use them all the time. Just like I said I love them. So when should you use for loops and when should you use while loops? Well whenever we're doing our practices I'm going to tell you I want you to use a for loop here, I want you to use a while loop here. That's just so that you can practice both kinds of loops. But after that, whenever you get to determine what kind of loop you think is, is the right way to go, here's some guidelines. While loops are usually better when you don't know how long the loop is going to run and you want to keep looping while something is true, such as uh, sentinel controlled loops. Like you ask, uh, do you want to play again? You have no idea if they're going to say yes or no. So that would be a sentinel controlled while loop. You don't you can't say a for loop for that. You don't know how many times it'll run. For loops are better when you want to run for a predetermined number of iterations. So you know whenever you enter that loop exactly how many times it's going to run. Or something called a fence post loop, like you want to loop from one number to another. Say add all the numbers from 100 to 200. You want to start at 100, go to 200, and hit all the numbers in between. Then that would be called a fence post loop. So you want to do some practice problems. All right, I got BlueJ all set up. Got my uh, code skeleton over here. It includes scanner stuff, even though we don't actually get any user input until problem eight, I think. Let's go ahead and do the first couple. Problem one. Write the code using a for loop and a loop variable to produce the following output. For. So I need a loop variable. I'm going to call it i. Now what's going to be my starting position? I'm going to start at 1, semicolon. And I want this loop to run as long as i is less than or equal to, I'm going all the way till 9. So equal to 9 is fine, but greater than 9 is bad. So that should work. 
and how much do I want i to increase each time? I want i to go up by 1, so I could do i equals i plus 1, or I could do i plus plus. Let's put some braces in there, and what do I want to happen? I just want to do an output statement system dot out dot print, and I want to print i. That is all. Compile. Run. There we go. 1 through 9. Now just like uh, if statements and while loops, I only have one thing inside of the braces, so the braces are actually not necessary. I could write my for loop like this, and anything that I put below it will not be included in the loop since the loop only has one line of code with it. Problem 2 says do the exact same thing but this time put spaces. Easy. Copy. Paste. But instead of just printing I, I want to print I and then concatenate on a space. Compile. Run. Oh. But they're on the same line. I always do that. Why do I always do that? So before I go to problem two, maybe I want to system dot out dot print line. Let's do that. That'll put a lot of spaces in there. Okay. So notice that this was not included as part of that for loop. The for loop is just this purple block. It's the header and then it's one single line of code after it. This is not included in the for loop. It's treated as a separate thing because there are no braces around it. Let's do the same down here. I'm going to help you with one more, but I'm not going to do problem three. I'm not going to do problem four. I'm going to jump up to problem five so that we can see something different happening. Problem 5 says write the code using a for loop and a loop variable to produce the following output 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Alright, let me borrow this. Throw it in here. Let's make some adjustments. int i equals 1. So that's where we're starting i. Is that where we want to start i? Maybe it would be easier if we started i at 20. And how long do we want this to run? Well, the last number is 90, so we want to go as long as i is less than or equal to 90. But greater than 90 would be a problem. And how much do we want i to change each time? We don't want it to go up by 1. We could say, let's keep changing i so that every time we loop, i goes up by 10. So I can write i equals i plus 10, or I can use my special assignment operator, i plus equals 10. Let's take a look at that. Compile, run, and there we go. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Alternately, I could have uh, continued to go up by 1. If we increase by 1 each time, then we only want to print i if it is a multiple of 10. So you could put an if statement in here, if i mod 10 equals 0, as in it's evenly divisible by 10, then I want to print it, but only if it's divisible by 10. So even though we're going up uh, by 1 each time, this loop is going to run significantly more than it did before, but it's only going to print on certain occasions. Compile and run, and you see we get the exact same output. So it's up to you, however you want to solve that. So this lab has a handful of practice problems for you, followed by an app you write to help determine if a number is a prime number. Good luck, and I hope you like math. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.